Samantha Ray stared at the gruesome crime scene photos spread across her cluttered desk, the harsh fluorescent lights of the precinct casting an eerie glow. Crimson blood, visceral slashes, vacant eyes frozen in eternal horror. They'd become her constant companions these past few months as she hunted the soulmate slayer. But this latest victim made her blood run cold. Because staring back at her from the glossy 1810, bone-white skin marred by a joker-like grin carved ear to ear, was the face of her estranged twin sister, Sadie. Detective? Her partner's gruff voice shattered her spiraling thoughts. We've got a suspect in custody. You're gonna want to see this. Samantha followed him on numb legs to the interrogation room, stealing herself before opening the door. Her breath left her in a rush. There, shackled to the table, dark hair falling over stormy gray eyes, was the man she'd tried so hard to forget. Tried and failed, a traitorous voice whispered. Hello, Sammy. Alec Novak, her sister's fiancé, smiled coldly. It's been a while. Memories assailed her. Heated conversations over scotch, lingering glances when Sadie's back was turned, a forbidden kiss in a darkened hallway that still seared her dreams. That fateful night, stumbling away from her sister's engagement party, Alec's taste on her lips and shame branding her soul. She'd vowed to bury those treacherous feelings. To mend the fractured bond with her mirror image, the other half of her broken whole. But now, with Sadie's blood staining her twin's hands and suspicion clouding those enigmatic eyes, Samantha knew there was no going back. Only forward into the pitch-black labyrinth that had ensnared them all. A labyrinth of secrets and lies, of twisted love and shattered trust. As she sat across from the man who still made her ache, Samantha knew she'd have to voyage into the very heart of darkness to find the truth. Her badge and her battered, traitorous heart were the only lights to guide her, even if it meant shattering both beyond repair. Start talking, Novak, she bit out, proud of how steady her voice remained. Tell me how my sister ended up in a body bag. His gaze flickered, something akin to pain fracturing the mask before it clicked back into place. I think we both know the answer to that, detective. Samantha's blood chilled as the unspoken truth stretched between them, barbed and smoldering. The last time she'd seen Sadie, harsh words had been exchanged. Ugly truths unsheathed like rusted blades to slice at tender scars. How dare you! Sadie had seethed, viridian eyes so like Samantha's own bright with unshed tears and simmering betrayal. After everything we've endured, the hell we crawled out of together. You'd point the finger at me? Guilt, lead heavy and nauseating, had pressed on Samantha's chest. I'm not accusing you of anything, she'd entreated, fighting to keep her voice level. Professional, dot dot. But you have to admit, the evidence. Tell with your evidence. Sadie's composure cracked, fissuring like a porcelain mask. If you can't trust your own flesh and blood over some circumstantial bullshit and your textbook profile, we have nothing left to say to each other. She'd stormed out then, the echo of the slamming door ricocheting in the hollowness of Samantha's chest long after the squeal of tires faded. That was the last time she'd seen her sister alive. When the next call came in, Sadie was lying in a pool of her own blood, hauntingly empty eyes fixed on the harvest moon. And Alec Novak, her sister's beloved fiancé, had been found crouched over the body, hands stained in carnadine. The same hands now cuffed before her, Knuckles split and raw dotty wah. The same hands that had once cradled her face with such gentleness as he breathed her name like a prayer. Samantha physically recoiled from the memory, from the lurch of her traitorous heart. Acid scalded her throat. Where's your ring, Novak? She kept her tone carefully neutral, even as her insides quailed. His left hand flexed, the strip of paler skin where the platinum band used to rest taunting her. I took it off. Before or after you mutilated my sister? In her periphery, Samantha saw her partner shift, but she couldn't tear her gaze away from Alec. He leaned forward, a muscle ticking in his jaw. When he spoke, his voice was hoarse with some unidentifiable emotion. I didn't kill her, Sammy. The old endearment, flung so casually from the lips that once slanted over hers, 
nearly undid her. But, Samantha Ray was forged of steel and ice, the bite of the blade that carved a smile into her sister's face. She would not bend, would not break, even as the fractured little girl inside her wept. Don't call me that, she spat, fingernails biting into her palms. You have no right. Not anymore. Not after what she'd sacrificed, what they'd both sacrificed on the altar of duty and family. The acrid smoke of those bridges, burned with a zippo and a goodbye note, still stung her eyes. Slowly, deliberately, Samantha opened the thick file on the table. Crime scene photos spilled out, macabre and damning. Your fingerprints are all over her, Novak. Her blood is embedded in your cuticles. Under your nails. She tapped a glossy AT sten, the scarlet runes vivid against the stark white tile. And this? Your initials, carved into her stomach. Right above the killing blow. She could still smell the copper tang, cloying and thick. Could still feel the viscous slide of it on her hands as she desperately tried to staunch the flow, even knowing it was far, far too late. So don't sit there and lie to me, she hissed, leaning in until their faces were inches apart, the specter of their past and almost tangible presence between them. Don't you dare dishonor my sister's memory more than you already have. For a beat, the only sound was their ragged breathing, a dissonant harmony. Then, slowly, Alec reached across the table. Ignoring her flinch, he touched a finger to the hollow of her throat, where a delicate golden locket rested. Sadie's locket. I'm so sorry, Sammy, he whispered brokenly. I never meant for any of this to happen. I swear on my life, on everything I once felt for you. I didn't hurt her. The earnestness in his eyes, the anguish contorting his features, cut at her resolve. Cut at the scar tissue enshrouding the fragment of her heart that despite the ugliness and despair of the intervening years, still bore his name. Then his gaze hardened his hand dropping away. But I know who did. And trust me, detective, you don't have a clue what you've stumbled into. What dark secrets linger in the branches of the family tree you so desperately tried to escape. A cold finger traced down Samantha's spine, a shiver of foreboding, of dreadful sinking recognition. Because she did know, didn't she? Deep down in the marrow of her, in the screaming silence of night terrors and lullabies echoing with screams. She knew precisely what poisoned fruit hung low and fetid, what gnarled, rotten roots anchored the gleaming facade. Sadie wasn't the first Ray woman to meet a grisly end. And if the past was any indication, any warning to heed from the grave, she wouldn't be the last. Unless Samantha unearthed those buried skeletons once and for all, Pride opened the locked doors and let the shadows come dancing out, even if damnation waited on the other side. Samantha's heels echoed hollowly through the marbled halls of the Ray family mausoleum, a grim tempo to accompany the revelations churning in her gut. Alec's words resonated in her skull, an insidious whisper she couldn't shake. Dark secrets in the family tree. Skeletons rattling behind locked doors, begging to be let out to play. She'd spent her whole life running from this place, from the specter of her mother's madness and the legacy of violence that seemed to flow through their shared blood. But now, with Sadie gone and Alec's cryptic warnings ringing in her ears, she knew she had no choice but to unearth the truth. No matter how ugly, how painful, no matter if it damned her in the process. Stealing herself, Samantha approached the towering statue of the weeping angel, its stone visage contorted in eternal grief. Just like her mother's face that final night. The night everything changed. With shaking fingers, she traced the inscription at the base, the words seared into her memory like a brand. Vivian Ray, beloved wife and mother, till death do us part. Death had certainly parted them, cleaved their family into jagged shards that still lacerated Samantha's heart. But it was the manner of that death, the insidious secrets that lurked beneath, that haunted her even now. Secrets she'd tried so hard to outrun, to bury beneath the shield of her badge and the armor of her cynicism. But some graves refused to stay sealed. 
I'm so sorry, Mama, she whispered, resting her forehead against the cool marble. I'm sorry I didn't save you. Didn't save Sadie. Hot tears tracked down her cheeks, the salt stinging the invisible wounds she carried. In the ethereal hush of the sepulcher, with only the dead to bear witness, Samantha finally let herself shatter. Let herself feel the full brunt of the grief, the guilt, the simmering rage at the twisted hand fate had dealt them. At the curse that seemed to flow in her veins, corrupting everything it touched. I should have been there, she choked out, fists clenching at her sides. Should have seen the signs. Protected her from... From what? The monster that had stolen their mother's sanity? and now seemed hell-bent on destroying everything Samantha held dear? Or the monster in her own heart, the one that coveted her sister's fiancé, that burned with forbidden longing even as Sadie's blood cooled on the altar of his betrayal? A breathless sob tore from her throat, all the more violent for how long it had been suppressed. Samantha sank to her knees, the chill of the stone seeping through her slacks. Anchoring her to the here and now, even as the past threatened to drag her under. She wasn't sure how long she knelt there, surrendering to the maelstrom. But eventually the tears ran dry, leaving only a bone-deep weariness in their wake. Slowly, painfully, she pushed to her feet, swiped at her ravaged face with trembling hands. She had a job to do, a promise to keep. To Sadie. To their mother. To herself. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha turned to face the long, shadow-strewn corridor. At the far end, barely visible in the guttering light, loomed the heavy oak door that guarded the family crypt. The crypt where Vivian Ray had been found all those years ago, her once vibrant eyes vacant in death. Where the coroner had ruled her passing a tragic suicide, even as Samantha and Sadie screamed themselves hoarse that it couldn't be true, that their mother would never abandon them like that. That something far more sinister lurked in the darkness of their family's tortured history, something Samantha could no longer run from. One leaden step at a time, she forced herself down the corridor, the beam of her flashlight slicing through the cobwebbed gloom. The old door loomed before her, the rusted padlock an accusing sentinel. With numb fingers, Samantha retrieved the key from the chain around her neck, the metal warm from resting against her hammering heart. The lock yielded with a plaintive groan, the hinges protesting as she heaved the door open. Stale air rushed out to meet her, thick with the cloying scent of decay and secrets long buried. Samantha fought the urge to gag, the rational part of her brain cataloging the lack of signs of recent disturbance, even as her baser instincts screamed to run. But she was done running. Wherever this twisted path led, she would see it through. For Sadie. For the truth. Even if it destroyed her. Flashlight in one hand, service weapon in the other, Samantha descended into the waiting darkness. The beam of her light danced over the stone sarcophagi, their once gleaming surfaces dulled with age and neglect. Samantha's heart thudded painfully against her ribs as she approached the far wall, where a familiar portrait hung in a place of macabre honor. Vivian Ray stared out from the gilded frame, raven hair cascading over a white gown. A riot of crimson roses clutched to her breast. But it was her eyes that snared Samantha's gaze, as they always had. Brilliantly green, larger than life, rimming with secrets and sorrows that transcended mortal understanding. The same eyes that had stared up at her from Sadie's ravaged face, flat and empty in death. The same eyes that watched her now. I'm here, Mama, Samantha whispered, reaching up to touch the faded canvas with a reverent hand. I'm here now. And I swear, on Sadie D's grave, I won't stop until I uncover the truth. Until I make this right. As if in answer, a sudden gust of wind tore through the crypt, extinguishing her flashlight and plunging her into inky blackness. Samantha froze heart in her throat, as an ungodly wail rose from the depths of the tomb. A wail that sounded eerily, impossibly, like her mother's dying scream. Ice flooded Samantha's veins even as her finger tightened on the trigger. But before she could react, before she could even draw breath, a blinding pain exploded in her skull. 
Then the darkness rose up to claim her, and she knew no more. When Samantha woke, it was to a throbbing head and a coppery taste in her mouth. Gingerly, she reached up to probe the tender lump at the base of her skull, her fingers coming away sticky with half-dried blood. Blinking away the lingering cobwebs, she pushed to a sitting position, taking stock of her surroundings with a rising sense of dread. She was in a small, dimly lit room, the rough stone walls pressing in on her like a tomb. Rusted shackles hung from the ceiling, the manacles empty and waiting. A single flickering bulb cast eerie shadows across a workbench cluttered with tools she'd rather not contemplate. A torture chamber buried in the bowels of her family's estate. A chamber no one outside the Ray bloodline even knew existed. Bai scorched her throat as the pieces fell into place with sickening clarity. The mysterious deaths. The hushed whispers. Her mother's descent into madness. Sadie's blood on Alec's hands. It hadn't been a stranger who'd shattered their lives, who'd carved a mocking grin into her sister's once lovely face. No random psychopath, no jilted lover. The call was coming from inside the house. Inside the twisted branches of their family tree. Ah, you're awake. The voice, coldly urbane, cut through the miasma of horror and realization. I was starting to worry, little dove. You've been out for quite a while. Samantha's head snapped up, her heart clenching at the painfully familiar endearment. There. Silhouetted in the open doorway, stood the last person she'd ever expected. Hello, my darling, Damien Ray purred, green eyes glinting with manic fervor in the guttering light. Eyes that were the mirror of her own, of their mother's. Welcome to the family reunion. Her father, the man who had abandoned them after Vivian's death. The man who had been conspicuously, damningly absent ever since. And now, Samantha knew why. You, Gal. It came out a broken rasp, horror and betrayal turning the single syllable to ashes on her tongue. It was you. All this time? All this time, Damien agreed, prowling closer with a predator's grace. With a showman's flourish, he spread his arms wide, a ringmaster presenting his macabre circus. And oh, what a glorious game it's been. Watching you and Sadie scramble like rats in a maze, chasing your tails in a futile quest for answers. For absolution. He chuckled darkly, the sound raising goose flesh on Samantha's arms. As if absolution is even possible for the likes of us. For the poison that flows through our veins. Samantha shook her head mutely, refusing to accept it. Refusing to believe that the man who had once hoisted her on his shoulders, who had pressed whiskery kisses to her scraped knees and dried her tears, was the same man who now stood before her, reeking of death and madness. Why? The broken question fell from numb lips. A child's plea to a monster wearing her father's face. Why would you do this? To mom. To Sadie. To me, she didn't say. But it echoed in the spaces between, a lifetime of abandonment and unanswered questions. Damien's smile sharpened, a slash of white in the gloom. Why? Why? Because it's our birthright, little dove? Our legacy. He began to pace, expensive shoes clicking on the filthy stone. The rays have always been a different breed. Set apart? Chosen. His eyes took on a zealous sheen, fervor contorting his aristocratic features into something barely human. We're apex predators in a world of sheep. And like any predator, we must call the herd. Weed out the wheat. The unworthy. He stopped before her, cupping her face with deceptive tenderness. Samantha flinched but didn't pull away, trapped by his hypnotic gaze. Your mother understood, at the end. Understood the glorious purpose to which she'd been called. The sacred duty to scour the tainted blood from our line. His thumb stroked over her cheekbone, a twisted benediction. That's why she had to die. Why they all had to die. Comprehension slammed into Samantha like a physical blow, staggering in its horrific clarity. The accidents. The suicides. The tragic deaths that had winnowed the Ray family tree down to a bare, twisted few. 
down to her, to Sadie, the last branches standing against the diseased roots that anchored them. You're insane, she breathed, jerking away from his touch as if scalded. You're not chosen. You're not special. You're a goddamn psychopath. Damien's eyes flashed, his hand cracking across her face like a whip. Samantha's head snapped back, stars exploding across her vision. Ungrateful bitch, he hissed, fingers biting into her jaw as he wrenched her forward. I'm offering you a place at my side. A chance to claim your birthright and ascend to the pantheon of our ancestors. And this is how you repay me? Samantha smiled through the blood on her teeth. A death's head grin to match the one he'd carved into Sadie. Go to hell. Damien reared back, nostrils flaring. For a breathless moment, she thought he might hit her again. Prayed he would. If only to grant her the illusion of choice in what was to come. But then slowly his expression smoothed. Transformed into something even more terrifying in its calculated calm. So be it, he said softly, almost gently. If hell is what you desire, then I shall gladly be your guide. He reached into his suit jacket, withdrawing a wickedly curved blade. The same blade, Samantha knew with sudden, searing certainty, that had slashed the life from her sister's body and left her broken on the altar of their father's madness. The same blade that would now taste her own blood, would carve the tainted meat from her bones and leave her a husk, a smiling sacrifice to a legacy of lunacy. Such a pity. Damien mused, tilting the knife to catch the light. It glinted like a mirror, like a promise. You had such potential, Samantha. Such a fierce, fractured beauty. We could have reshaped the world in our image, you and I. He shook his head with mock regret, a death knell tolling in the crypt of his eyes. But if you will not fall in line, you will simply fall. He took a step forward, unholy purpose coiled in every limb and Samantha knew, with a calm that belied the ragged tempo of her pulse, that she was going to die. Was going to bleed out on this cold stone floor. A footnote in the deranged annals of her family's history. A cautionary tale whispered to the shadows. She thought of her sister, of Sadie's laughter, bright and bubbling in the golden haze of their innocence. Of all the secrets they'd shared, the pinky promises made in pillow forts and solemn childish ceremonies. Secrets and promises now lost to the void, to the same darkness that had swallowed their mother whole and spit back a smiling corpse. Her mother, who had died in this very room, died weeping and alone, a lamb to the slaughter of her husband's grand delusion. Just like Samantha would now die, abandoned and unmourned, a sad coda to a symphony of tragedy. And in that moment, as the specter of her own mortality pressed down like a shroud, something inside her snapped. The shackles of years, of a lifetime spent running from the twisted roots that had borne her, shattered like spun glass. The fear, the shame, the helpless fury, it all fell away, burned to ash on the pyre of this last, shattering revelation, leaving only a cold, crystalline clarity the embers of a rage too long denied. Damien was wrong. She wasn't a lamb. She was a ray. And if she was going to die, she would do it on her own terms. Would carve her defiance into the fabric of this foul legacy with her last breath. As her father loomed over her, knife poised to strike, Samantha surged up to meet him, a scream of primal fury tearing from her throat. She slammed into his chest, knocking him back a step the blade skittering from his hand. They crashed to the floor in a tangle of limbs, grappling for dominance, for survival. Damien was larger, stronger, but Samantha was a ray. Viciousness flowed in her veins, a birthright and a curse. She sank her teeth into the meat of his forearm, blood flooding her mouth as he roared in pain. His fist cracked against her temple, stars bursting across her vision, but she held on, savage in her desperation. Rolling, clawing, they fetched up against the workbench, tools scattering like macabre confetti. Samantha's seeking hand closed around something solid, something real, the reassuring weight of a rusted hammer. She brought it down on the back of Damien's skull, with all her fractured strength, 
a sickening crack echoing off the stone. He slumped against her, dazed, his blood slick and hot on her skin. Panting. Samantha shoved him off, staggering to her feet, the hammer clenched in a white-knuckled grip. Her pulse roared in her ears, a war drum urging her on, drowning out the horror of what she'd done, of what she still had to do. You were right, she rasped, standing over his prone form, a Valkyrie in the flickering gloom. I am my mother's daughter. And with those words, a benediction and a curse, she brought the hammer down again. And again. And again. Until there was nothing left but blood and pulp and the broken shell of the man who had made her. Until, at last, the Ray legacy lay shattered at her feet, and the silence of the tomb pressed down like a shroud. Samantha stared at her handiwork, at the ruin of her father, and felt nothing. No horror, no triumph. Just a yawning void where her heart used to be. She was hollowed out, scoured clean, an empty vessel waiting to be filled. In the ringing silence that followed, Samantha stood over her father's cooling corpse, the bloodied hammer dangling from numb fingers. The air was thick with the coppery scent of death, cloying and inescapable, just like the truth she'd unearthed. The twisted legacy that had led her to this moment, this place, this reckoning. A shudder racked her frame, the last vestiges of adrenaline deserting her in a sickening rush. The hammer clattered to the stone, the sound impossibly loud in the tomb-like stillness. She had to get out of here. Had to. Had to. But where could she go? What sanctuary could she seek, with her sister cold in the ground and her father's blood on her hands? What absolution could there be for a daughter of the damned? Samantha swayed on her feet, black spots swarming her vision. She welcomed the encroaching darkness, the promise of oblivion. Craved it like a sinner craving grace. But even as her knees buckled, even as the floor rushed up to meet her, a voice shattered the silence a voice she knew better than her own heartbeat. Samantha! Alec died. Alec was here. Alec had come for her. Strong arms caught her before she could hit the ground, pulling her against a chest that heaved with exertion. With the same desperate relief that sang through her veins like a hallelujah. I've got you, he murmured into her hair. The words a ragged prayer. I've got you, Sammy. You're safe now. But, even as she clung to him, even as she breathed in the clean, familiar scent of him, Samantha knew it wasn't true. Knew it in the marrow of her bones, in the dark corners of her tainted heart. She would never be safe, never be free. Not truly. Not while the twisted roots of the Ray legacy still held her fast. Gently, so gently, Alec tilted her chin up, forcing her to meet his haunted gaze. His eyes, those fathomless blue eyes, searched her face, a drowning man seeking salvation. Are you... He swallowed hard, the words caught in his throat. Did he? Mutely, Samantha shook her head. She couldn't give voice to it, to the horror she'd endured. The horror she'd enacted. Alec's gaze flicked over her shoulder, to the ruin of her father to the blood and brains splattered like some macabre Jackson Pollock dot. She felt his shudder, his instinctive recoil. But he didn't let her go. Didn't release her from the shelter of his arms. It's over, he said softly, fiercely. A vow and a benediction. He can't hurt you anymore. Can't hurt anyone. Samantha wanted to believe him. Wanted it with a desperation that bordered on madness. But even as she sagged against him, even as she let him lead her out of that charnel house on trembling legs, she knew better. It would never be over. Not really. The curse that flowed in her veins, the poison that had driven her father, her mother, to such depths of depravity. It was part of her now. Part of who she was, who she would always be. The last scion of a blighted bloodline. The final heir? to a legacy of lunacy. In the days that followed, as the police crawled over every inch of the estate, as the headlines screamed and the vultures circled, Samantha drifted through it all in a haze. 
a waking nightmare from which there was no escape. She gave her statement in a voice that didn't sound like her own, words tumbling from numb lips like a confession, like a curse. Self-defense, they called it. A tragic case of a deranged father, a heroic daughter, a family torn asunder by madness and reclaimed by courage. If only they knew the truth. If only they could see the darkness that coiled behind her eyes, the abyss that yawned in her soul. Alec never left her side, a silent sentinel standing guard against the maelstrom. He fielded the reporters, the well-wishers, the gawkers, held her hand through the funeral, through the reading of the will, through the moment when the family lawyer revealed the final twist of the knife, the last vicious blow from a man determined to shatter her even from beyond the grave. As the sole surviving heir, the lawyer intoned, peering at her over his spectacles, you stand to inherit the entirety of the Ray estate. The houses, the holdings, the fortune. All of it. Samantha stared at him, uncomprehending. The words washed over her, meaningless syllables that couldn't penetrate the fog enshrouding her mind. Inherit. The Ray estate. The twisted mausoleum that had birthed such horror, such suffering. It was blood money. Tainted wealth, accrued over generations of depravity and death. The very thought of it made her gorge rise, made her skin crawl as if it could sense the evil embedded in every dollar, every deed. No. The word was a croak, torn from a throat raw from screaming, from swallowing back the howls that threatened to shatter her from the inside out. The lawyer blinked, taken aback. I beg your pardon? I said no. Stronger now, sparking with something perilously close to rage. I don't want it. Any of it. But, but, you can't just, just. I can. Samantha pushed to her feet, the chair clattering behind her. And I am. She felt Alec's hand on her arm, a silent show of support. Of solidarity. It gave her the strength to say her next words, to spit them like venom at the feet of the man who thought to chain her to this hell. I hereby renounce my claim to the Ray estate, and everything it entails. Let it burn, for all I care. Let it all burn. Without another word, she turned on her heel and strode from the room, from the house, from the life that had brought her nothing but anguish. Alec followed close behind, a steadying presence at her back. They made it as far as the sprawling front lawn before her legs gave out, before the sobs she'd been holding back tore free in a ragged animal keen. Alec caught her as she crumpled, sinking to the grass and pulling her into his lap. He rocked her as she wept, as she raged, as she purged the poison of a lifetime in an endless, aching flow. It's all right, he murmured, over and over, a litany of comfort. It's going to be all right, Sammy. We'll make it right. But even as she clung to him, even as she let herself believe, just for a moment, that he could be her salvation, Samantha knew the truth. There was no making this right. No wiping clean the blood on her hands, the stain on her soul. The Ray legacy was a cancer, and she was its final fatal metastasis. And yet, and yet, as she sat there in the shelter of Alec's arms, as she breathed in the scent of him, felt the steady thrum of his heartbeat against her cheek, a tiny, treacherous spark ignited in the darkness, a flicker of something she'd thought long extinguished. Hope. Not for absolution. Not for redemption. But for... something. A chance, however slight, to carve a new path. To walk away from the ruins of her past and into a future of her own making. It was a fool's hope, she knew. A sinner's prayer, whispered into the void. But it was all she had. All she could cling to, in the wreckage of everything she'd been. Take me away from here she whispered, tilting her face up to Alex. Seeing her own desperation, her own wild hope, reflected back at her in those fathomless blue eyes. Please, just take me away. And so he did. They left that very night with nothing but the clothes on their backs and the scars on their souls. Left the twisted tomb of Samantha's childhood behind. Let the ghosts and the memories and the echoes of madness fade into the rearview mirror. 
They drove without destination, without direction. Chasing the horizon, the promise of a new dawn. Samantha let the wind whip through her hair, let the miles unspool beneath them like a ribbon of asphalt absolution. And with each passing mile, each passing minute, she felt the bands around her heart loosen, felt the weight of her forefather's sins, her family's curse, ease its stranglehold on her soul. Not gone. Never gone. But bearable. A burden she could shoulder, with Alec by her side. A cross she could carry, knowing she wasn't alone. They ended up in a small coastal town, the kind of place where no one knew their names or their faces, where the only history that mattered was the one they would write together. They rented a cottage on the outskirts of town, a ramshackle little place with a porch that sagged and shutters that creaked in the salt spray breeze. But it was theirs, and that was enough. Slowly, painstakingly, they began to build a life, a quiet life. A simple life. A life untouched by legacies and birthrights and the sins of the father. Alec took a job at the local garage, his hands as skilled with engines as they had once been with triggers. And Samantha. Samantha learned to breathe again. She walked the beaches in the early morning light, letting the sand scour her feet and the wind whip away her tears. She tended the tiny garden behind their cottage, coaxing life from the earth with hands that had once wrought such death. And in the evenings, wrapped in Alec's arms as the sun sank into the sea, painting the sky in shades of absolution, she began to heal. It wasn't easy. The nightmares still came, the memories still haunted. There were moments when the darkness threatened to swallow her whole, when the abyss yawned wide and hungry at her feet. But Alec was always there to catch her to hold her, to anchor her, to remind her of the one truth that could cut through the shadows like a blade of pure light. She was not her father's daughter. Not anymore. Not ever again. She was Samantha Ray, survivor. Samantha Ray, victor, Dorda. Samantha Ray, free. And in the end, that was enough. That was everything. One morning, as they lay tangled together in the sheets, Dawn's first light slanting through the curtains, to paint their skin in gold. Alec pressed a small, velvet box into her hand. Samantha's heart stuttered, a breathless gasp escaping her lips as she cracked the lid. Nestled inside was a ring, deceptively simple. A band of braided gold, unadorned save for a single, shimmering emerald. The same shade as her eyes. The same shade as her mother's as Sadie's, as the eyes of every Ray woman who had come before, and who would never come again. I know it's not traditional, Alec murmured, his fingers lacing with hers. But then, we've never been ones for tradition, have we? A laugh bubbled up Samantha's throat, startled and rusty from disuse. From a lifetime of swallowing her mirth, her joy, lest it draw the monsters from the shadows. But there were no monsters here. No shadows, no curses. Just her, and Alec, and the promise of a future forged in the crucible of their shared pain. A future that belonged to them, and them alone. No, she agreed, tilting her face up to his. Letting him see the love, the hope, the bonfire of defiance blazing in her eyes. No, we certainly haven't. And as he slipped the ring onto her finger, as he sealed his lips to hers in a kiss that tasted of salt and redemption, and the first tentative flutter of joy. Samantha knew, with a certainty that went soul deep. The Ray legacy ended here, ended now, ended with her, the last scion of a tainted bloodline. But her legacy, their legacy, it was just beginning, and it would be a legacy of light, of love, of hope rising from the ashes of despair, of a future, bright and boundless and brimming with promise, unstained, unbroken, free, well known.